Right, this maths video is about presenting data in biology. So here are the general rules for drawing a table and what kind of things you should include. The headings need to be clear, so not just concentration, not just enzyme, so not just writing the word amylase or something in there, so concentration of enzyme. Um, and then volume, not amount, so volume of gas produced. It's important to have the correct units, so moles per decimeter cubed and centimeters cubed, so after a slash or in brackets. An area that's easier to lose marks is not using consistent decimal places. Sometimes the question will say use one decimal place or use two decimal places. But in this example, we've not got consistent decimal places on either point. So these were the concentrations of enzyme that were provided. But you can see that two of these have got two decimal places and three of them have got one decimal place. Again, most of these are to the nearest whole number, but two of these have got to one decimal place. So in this slide, you can see um, consistent use of decimal places. So we've got each of these values to two decimal places and each of these to no decimal places. You need to know how to be able to draw a frequency table. So this is when you've got categoric data. Um, so type of PET, for example, is categoric data. So these are separate things. There's not, it's not li they're not linked in any way. And you're simply counting up the number of that thing in the population. So the number of people who had dogs is 12, the number of people with cats is 7, etc, etc. So that's how you set up a frequency table. You could have a situation where this is continuous, so for example height, um, and you might have between um, 150 and 160 centimetres, between 161 and 170 centimetres, 171 and 180 centimetres, and then you have the number of people between each of those heights. When that happens you can then plot the histogram which is the next slide. So here's an example of a histogram. So these aren't studied very much um, in, in biology, but you need to know how to do them. So again, rules for drawing graphs will be mo a lot of marks for those. So clear labels to both axes. So here we've got the mark out of 10, uh, mark out of 50, and we've got the frequency. So it's always frequency of the size or number of individuals. Um, units, so it's out of 50 is the mark. So it's not a great example, actually, this one, but yeah. Um, the bars have to be touching because the data is continuous. So the score goes from 0 to 50, and you go from 0, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, then through to 11, all the way through. So the numbers continue from 0 all the way up to 50. So it's a continuous um, scale. And the bars usually represent the frequency of individuals between points. So in this example here, uh, you read off 3 here. There are 3 people scored between... Uh, 20 and 30, so that bar represents that. So you usually use a histogram after you've done a frequency table. Bar charts, probably the most simple of charts to do. Again, you, uh, rules for drawing graphs, clear labels. We've got The easiest mistake to make is not label your x-axis. So these do also need a, a label. So fertilizer treatment, plant height. Um, there'll be a mark lost here because we've not got any units for plant height, so we don't know whether this is in millimeters, centimeters, meters. Um, depending if the plant is like a seedling a, or, or up to a tree if it was metres. So no units there. Um, got to have spaces between bars because these do not link. So they're separate things. It's categoric data. So you've got to have spaces between bars. And it's usually the case that the bars represent the mean value. So you've carried out several repeats. You calculate a mean and the bars, the top of the bars is where the mean with bar charts, you can do have standard deviation bars, which does allow you to see if the difference is significant. So between the control and F1, you can see that the top of that bar does not overlap with the bottom of that bar, so you do have a significant difference. Scatter diagrams or, or line graphs, um, again, clear labels to both axes, the independent variable on the bottom, so enzyme concentration on the bottom, rate of reaction up the side, so that's what you're measuring. Again, there's loose marks here for this example for not including units for rate of reaction. Um, so that is a unit per so a unit per, per time, so it could be centimetres cubed per minute, um, if it was a volume of gas given off. Um, line of best fit, so this does show a clear trend. Those points do fit a pattern, so there's a line of best fit done in this case. Um, a lot of the time in biology, though, there's not really a clear trend, uh, like with an enzyme graph that goes up and then down for temperature. So you have to do uh, straight lines between the dots, or dot to dot with a ruler. Um, it's, you draw this kind of graph when the data is continuous. Again, you can have standard deviation bars on a scatter plot, so you can see the difference between that point and that point is not significant because the standard deviation bars overlap.